Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox yet again. This is lesson five of the first unit of the Big Data Applications and Analytics course. Uh, this is part of the Indiana University School of Informatics and Computing Data Science curriculum. Uh, I'm going through details of units in this, um, in this course. Remember the course has sections, units, it has 33 units. And a unit is roughly uh, 30 to 60 minutes, uh, there's about 30 hours of video in all, and there's 33 units. And units are based, broken up into lessons. And this is the fifth lesson of the first unit, the introduction to the course. Course introduction, here we are. Okay, let's go for it. Um, the next, uh, now we move to a, a new section. That section has uh, four units, one unit on parallel computing and three units on clouds. Um, parallel computing is a very old unit, it's about um, 30 years old. It describes the basic concept of decomposition, which underlies parallel computing. Uh, when you're using parallel computing to, um, I don't know, to decide what you want to buy, uh, one approach would be to decompose everything you want to buy between different uh, cores or nodes of a parallel computer and analyze your interest on those on those items in parallel. Uh, we then point out that society has a lot of intrinsic parallel computing. And if you do a task like building some giant building where you have lots of bricklayers or people involved, that's a very good example of parallel computing. So this is just a very, this is not the standard computer science um, Rather difficult introduction to parallel computing. This is a general intuitive introduction to parallel computing. So uh, this section has uh, five units. The first we just discussed, parallel computing. Then we have four units, so many more discussing cloud computing, because that's um, much nearer the focus of this course. Although parallel computing is a wonderful area, it's my probably greatest expertise. So these four units uh, cover a wide range of topics. They start off by discussing what the National Science Foundation calls cyber infrastructure. And that's for the general problem, E more or less anything, or more or less anything dash informatics. Then we go and look at what is cloud computing with some party line view. Uh, NIST has a very good uh, view and also several other views. Then we go to one of our favorite sources, Gartner, who has uh, uh, these various uh, landscapes and hype curves and things like that. And they're done for various subsets of the, uh, of the cloud computing uh, ecosystem, big data, clouds, etc. Then we do a couple of simple examples from Microsoft and Google of uh, the use of cloud computing. And then we actually go to, um, Things in more detail, what is cloud computing in more detail? We focus on the cloud architecture, uh, looking at network as a service, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. We go through platform as a service in more detail. Then we have a, a long discussion of the uh, so-called HPC ABDS. ABDS stands for Apache Big Data Stack. And this provides a software stack with a set around 300 uh, Components which really tells you how big data is processed. We do cloud uh, architectures, data center architectures, including a, a discussion of the players in the field. And then we go to a Gartner analysis, which goes through the major infrastructure as a service vendors. And we do four in detail. Um, Amazon, the dominant force, Microsoft, Google, and Rackspace. And it's amazing how much bigger uh, Amazon is than all the others. We look at a short lesson in cloud storage trends, things like Dropbox and things. And then we go through applications, including those in science, discussing uh, what, what the structure is of a typical cloud application. We have comments on security in clouds, that's obviously a very important area. And we have co comments on fault tolerance. And <clears throat> that fault tolerance is both sort of real fault tolerance. I mean, the problem gave the, the cloud gave the wrong answer or just performance faults, namely it runs too slowly. Where you come into things like synchronization 
constraints that uh, if you have applications that need to coordinate and they have to, then if you have a, something slow or some virtualization overhead, you will get uh, lowered performance. In the last unit, we go through the 10 data access patterns that Bob Marcus from the NIST activity introduced. We look at uh, data in the cloud. And um, from a sort of architectural point of view, and also data process, big data processing from an application perspective, focusing on commercial um, approaches. So that's uh, this pretty comprehensive discussion of cloud computing. It's not going to give you the same as the cloud courses in the data science curriculum, because those courses are really going to tell you the details of how to use Hadoop. And then we'll go through many different things from what we do here. Here we're just doing very general issues, trying to give you an overview of what clouds are and what they do and how they fit in with everything else we're discussing. So that's the end of this this lesson in the introduction, and I thank you for listening to it. Thank you. Well, we've given you um, two thirds of the. Uh, course already, because remember there, was, there are three um, lessons which describe the course contents. And now we um, we just to told you about the cloud parallel computing and cloud computing, ended the discussion of the last lesson. Uh, the first uh, discussion on this lesson is um, the use case of web search and information retrieval and text mining. And I say there are two units, part one and two. We do a general survey of data mining. We define the web and text search problem. We discuss uh, history of libraries and things like that. Uh, the core information retrieval technology is actually pretty old. Some techniques like Boolean queries, fuzzy indices, the vector space. Well, I pointed out earlier that the really key idea is mapping abstract problems into spaces. And uh, that's done here as well, and you have a, it's not necessary to do that, but one of the more powerful methods is based on that. We have a discussion of probabilistic models, and the famous um, um, discussion of frequency versus Bayes as the interpretations of probability. This is an old area, I remember reading about this when I was a, a very junior assistant professor at Caltech. Uh, doing physics data analysis, I read. Or at that time, all this stuff was very new, and I was uh, building my knowledge of statistics and probability for the first time. And I remember long discussions of that. And as far as I know, the situation isn't actually resolved, except Bayesian methods, which even then were known to be uh, probably the best approach, are still the best approach. Uh, we look at data analytics used in web search. In the sort of detail, we go through document preparation, forming the inverted index, constructing the index, uh, how you do query structure and processing. Then we get on, this is sort of the core, very old information retrieval. A lot of the very important um, capabilities you now see come from the use of context and the joining all the information together. Um, because when you type a search, it knows who you are. It knows where you live, it knows what you do, it knows what you last did. And so you can use that to <coughs> optimize its response. And one of the things it does is link structure analysis, which is ranking um, using the number of links uh, to a page to rank the page and things like that. And that's where page rank comes from. It was one of the founding principles of Google when it was set up. This is then summarizes the whole area of a web search, discusses how to do or build a search engine. You have to crawl the web. We have a bit of discussion of web advertising. And we return to clustering and topic models, where instead of clustering items or people together, usually in the case of e-commerce, you cluster items together because you're trying to find which items are near each other, which people might like. In the case of um, Web search, you're clustering news items, even uh, clustering items by their common content. You'll cluster all the items on Indiana University's <coughs> sports program or something like that. 
Now we have, remember, red, the node software. And um, we have software for PageRank, which is offered in Python or Java. The discussion is the Python discussion. Um, then we go through uh, k-means in detail and do k-means in Python and Java, and that take a case of four artificial clusters and go through in great detail. Then we look at MapReduce, um, introduce you to MapReduce, which we've only done very, very briefly before in the uh, uh, in the motivation. And then we go to advanced topics in MapReduce about how people are extending it. And then we actually illustrate its use by applying it to k-means. Uh, and using Python, using a sort of by hand version of MapReduce to illustrate the basic principles. So this is um, an example of a technology uh, part of the course. Um, you can do all of this with essentially no knowledge of Python. Oh, and you can completely ignore Java if you don't want. There's no need to look at this in Java. And Python's actually a more elegant way of doing this part of the course. Because Java only pays off when you're doing large-scale production work where the power of Java as an enterprise software environment can be seen. Uh, the next uh, section and unit is on the Internet of Things and Sensors. We do an overview of the Internet of Things. We look at two areas, robots and drones, with some nifty examples. And then Recently, uh, the concept of the Industrial Internet of Things that's been pioneered by General Electric, who uh, they have, for instance, established a whole software effort in the Internet of Things, and has grown from z essentially zero a few years ago, three years ago, to 700 a day. When we look at clouds and their role in processing sensors and the Internet of Things. We look at an example from Polar Science, the work we do with uh, Kansas University. We look at the uh, General comments on smart cities. We go through some comments from Korea on the ubiquitous Korea and ubiquitous city and ubiquitous home concept. And the last set of slides discusses some issues around smart grids. These are smart electrical grids, where instrumenting with sensors, the grid can both help you monitor how you're generating the and distributing the energy, and also help you to look for non-optimal or optimal, in fact, the usage of the energy just based on monitoring how it's used in people's homes and in their businesses. Which is remote sensing or radar informatics, which we described in an application we know to glaciology. And uh, it causes us all important due to global climate change. The Changes now seen in the glaciers are affect strongly, are affected by global cli by global climate change, and they also impact global climate change because the melting glaciers are melted by the warming temperatures, and the melting glaciers then cause the sea level to rise and all sorts of havoc to be raised. Uh, we describe some technology, remote sensing technology, uh, the science of studying glaciers, which are more formally called ice sheets. The discussing radar, overview and basics, and what we're doing and how we're doing it in a collaboration with Kansas uh, at the Crisis Center. So that's uh, the last use case. Uh, we do not have a conclusion section. Maybe we should, maybe I'll produce one. But uh, you can go back and read the motivation if you want to conclude, because the conclusions is the same as the beginning. We're in a revolution. This tells you some. Highlights of that revolution with an application orientation. So now we're almost ready to get started. This is the course overview. Hope you found it useful. This is Jeffrey Fox signing off from lesson five of unit one. Thank you.